something together that is kind of like a crucible, makes us stronger as a team when we have to wake up at, in the morning at four in 32 degree weather and then ride our bikes. You could just see the clouds coming in and the rain pouring down and you knew any second now we're gonna hit the rain and it's going to be freezing cold. It's taking care of 27 people all at the same time and working together as a team um, takes a lot of effort. Um, I actually hated cycling when we started this trip. And at first when we hit the rain I was so scared. Um, I didn't know how I was gonna finish the next 60 miles. And then I just thought about um, some of our teammates have been saying lately that we should just smile and embrace it. And so I just was like, okay, embrace the rain and take it in. And I put a smile on my face and immediately it was just, everything changed. Everyone is getting better each and every day. I mean, we chew up centuries like nothing. In the end, we come out stronger, not only as individuals, but as a team. Like the ride became amazing. It was so much fun. I have not had a better ride this trip. And now I love it. I'm upset when I have to drive through something because I know it'd be so much prettier cycling. So when I was 16 years old, um, Texas 4000 actually came through uh, my small town. You know, they were riding their bikes to Alaska and they're doing it for a cause, so it kind of tied in with both things being compassionate towards people and also at the same time, you know, being adventurous and cycling, which I was so into. So I just looked up uh, at them and I was like, I'm going to Texas. I'm going to the University of Texas to go, you know, hopefully do that. And now I'm here. Mendocino County, and it's absolutely beautiful out here. I just wanted to share this with y'all. No matter how hard we are, no matter how many difficulties we are, we just keep doing, keep pedaling. That's it. Who cares? These are the stories that drive us up the hills which apparently Seattle has its fair share. Um, and through the wind, which we've already seen and we're not worried about, through the rain, and uh, just really throughout the entire day, we don't want to pedal anymore. And we always go around the circle and, and share our stories, and, and we draw strength in them. Hearing cancer stories every single day, and a lot of them not being very good ones. She found out a month before her wedding that she had cervical cancer, and went into surgery the morning right after her wedding. When her daughter got back from her honeymoon, um, she got a letter in the mail saying she had breast cancer. There's a lot of emotion in this circle, um, and it is it is quite um, incredible how, as a team, you can put all those emotions together and have that carry you through while you still have left. Each and every one of you is a hero for what you're doing. You're spending your entire summer selflessly riding for a cure for cancer. Every year, I'm honored to have you guys here because God chose each one of you for a special journey, for a good cause, to find the cure for this horrible disease. Canada, Europe, Asia, or United States. Cancer is cancer, they're all one. I started hosting because somebody had asked me, because they knew I was a cyclist, if I would take in some billets once the Rocky group left in 2005. I think I did too dang good of job because now the Sierra group has a rest day here as well. You guys were always spoiled and got to talk about water skiing and, and boarding and going out to lakes. So um, that's how that started. I'm a survivor um, and uh, um, been, been near death at, at one point. Um, won't go into, yeah, won't go into that. But I do want to talk and I do really want a hug from the other um, people who've lost their parents. Um, it's, even at my age, it, it sucks to be a, an orphan. Um, even before I started working on this year's uh, T4K and hosting you guys, um, I'd been spending a year with my mom. She was uh, diagnosed in uh, October, I think it was, 
that her white blood count had changed and she had leukemia and they were giving her three months, three to six months to live. It was the hardest thing for me to lose my mom because I'd already lost my dad in 96. So to do this and to hopefully find a, a cure to cancer is the main reason I do this, host you guys. Um, love you guys as much as I can, make you guys part of my family. And she has always been there for the Texas 4000 as well. So this is her first year not being here at the potlucks and stuff and laughing and, and joking with you guys and, you know, and I really miss that. Um, I ride for my dad, longtime smoker, who lost his father to lung cancer. I mean, I tried t telling him uh, that it'd be, it'd be good to see him get rid of his addiction. When we get to Alaska, I know that's gonna happen. Uh, I know it's really hard for him. Back, back then, you know, I, my dad was my, my hero. My idol looked up to him. And now, you know, he told me before my ride things to switch. He looks up to me now for uh, guidance. And uh, with that said, I'm riding in hopes that you can look up to me enough to put down the dip can. And because uh, I want to be able to experience this again uh, someday with him. It's like I couldn't be there for him then, but I'll be riding for him now. 10 to 12 miles of 8% grade um, back that way on our way <coughs> towards the ice fields. Um, 7 o'clock on a Wednesday, July 14th. What are you doing? Uh, it's a tradition within Tex 4000 to have a border race. Man, that was cool for me because I'd never really watched cycling before. This was my first road bike. I just thought they were in it for the, the scenery and the tight shorts. Uh, today was our first uh, border crossing. And he says, nope. He goes way to the left. And then I'm out in the lead, looking around. Somebody's gaining on me. It's very special for me. Uh, I, I won. Horses on three. One, two, three. Woo! 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 Did your uh, first place finish go? It's tough, man. Was that one of the hardest races but, uh, you ever done? You know, I just. Good for it, like Seabiscuit, man. Today we only have a 40 mile ride and the scenery will be gorgeous. So I, I will smile on the bike and I hope every one of you will embrace this beautiful scenery. So I've, uh, I've been to the Rocky Mountains before, but none of those compared to the Tetons. These are gorgeous and nothing beats actually having to bring your bicycle today. I ride 15 miles of the uh, 40 mile ride today and I get to the rest stop and Jackson tells me uh, very bad news that it's actually not a 40 mile day, but more like a 100 mile day of uphills and climbs. And so I said, well Jackson, where's the bad news? Because that sounds like I get 60 more miles of the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. I really never thought I would be here until today that I saw the sign. And I think, you know, just going through the desert and the hills and seeing the ocean and going through all the pain and being able to finish it. It's not only a physical task, but I think it's more mental. It's an incredible adventure where you get to see some of the last great wilderness in this world. But I think it's one of those things where it's, it's something you can't just do on your own. You know, you've, you've got a whole team of people with you. You can't, you can't live for yourself because the, the more you live for yourself, the more empty you're gonna feel. But when you start really living for others, that's where you really gain a sense of purpose.